M0FXB Hamtech, welcome to my channel. So look what we've got here. We've got a dual MMDVM hat, which was £17 delivered, which is a bargain. Let me show you what's inside. Right, so although it's a dual hat, which is great because it means you'll be able to actually listen to two talk groups at the same time, but you would need two radios. Uh, you can still use it as a single hat, and it came with an OLED screen, and the OLED screens are about £5, so I just thought it was an absolute bargain. So I couldn't resist it, and I just wanted to tinker anyway. Now, if you look here at all the different modes that you're seeing there, have a look. Um, DMR, D-Star Fusion, P25. Now, I am going to try and update this to the, the version that will do, you know, the firmware on this, M17, um, using the WPS the firmware update command. I don't know if it will work though, but it doesn't matter because it's it's still a bargain. And they they give you these, uh, and the reason you have them is if you haven't got the GPIO pins on your Raspberry Pi. Now we can use a Raspberry Pi 3B, which is the one I actually like to work with. But the other one we've got is we've got a Pi Zero here. This one's actually running DigiPi. Have you ever heard of DigiPi? Fantastic. Wirelessly connects, you know, HF radios and 705 uh, to things like WSJTX, FL, Digi, T it does um, APRS. It's just brilliant. And so check that one out. But anyway, so I'm going to be using today the Raspberry Pi 3. As you can see, it just literally just, you know, if we want to assemble it, it just slots on here. Move a bit closer. Because it came with the OLED screen, it came with the antenna already soldered. Normally you've got to solder the antenna. So look, from a hardware point of view, it's ready to go. Two antennas. And we are going to get this working with my DMR radio, of course. I've got in the background. And also I've got my 70 D74 there. A bit blurry. But there it is. And I've got my Fusion. And we're going to try and get it working with all of these. But we're only going to use, I'm only going to, I think, use it in simplex mode in this video. I have made lots of videos with duplex hats already. But in this video, it's just simplex mode. So we've connected it, get the antennas on there. Now we do need to configure the SD card. So I'm going to show you that quickly. And then fire it all up. We're going to need an SD card adapter. Let's put our SD card into this and then plug this into our PC. Away we go. And when I power this, you want at least two amps, I would say. But when I power this Raspberry 3B, I use a USB-C adapter. Look, it cost about 50p. I've got about six of these lying around. At the PC, first thing is create a new folder. So right click on your desktop, go new folder and give it a name. So I'll call it Pi Star 2. OK, that's what we've called it. Then go to PyStar Downloads here. The link will be in the description. Click Download and download the latest version. So let's have a look. We want 4.2, oh, there it is there, 4.2.0. So click that and download that zip. And when that zip populates, we're going to extract it into that folder that we've got. The other thing we're going to do is format the SD card, which is plugged into the PC. So all you do is just go to your file here, yellow file at the bottom, find your SD card. There's already something in there. So we're going to right click and format. Start. It's got a nice blank SD card to start with. Done that. You also need to download Berliner Etcher, which is this program. And it looks like this. We'll be using it in a second. And you may as well get yourself an SD card formatter. The computer does it, but if you want, you know, the super version. And also download Advanced IP Scanner, because what this does is search your network. So once you've downloaded it, it looks like this. Click Play, and it's going to find everything on your network, because we're going to configure this up so that it's, it's, it's wirelessly connected. And to do that, we have to create what we call a WPA file. So if we go to a thing called Wi-Fi Builder, actually it's called PyStar Builder, sorry about that. So there you go, go here, put in the username and password of your router at home. So we'll just invent one, All right, just for now. Okay, submit, and it makes this file called a WPA supplicant file, okay? 
that file, if you right click it and go show in folder, we're going to actually drag it, just literally click it and when we need it and drag it into our SD card once it's configured and that's going to allow us to connect via Wi-Fi. Of course you can just use your Ethernet cable if you've got a, especially something like a Raspberry Pi 3B, you can use that and then configure it afterwards. Okay, double click the download from PyStar, it's a zip format and just extract it to that file so you know where it is click extract and there's a file that we called PyStar2 on our desktop P PyStar2 and just click OK and we know where that is now it's quite a big file now we go to the program called Bellina which looks like this it knows that our SD cards plugged in we're going to go flash from the file we just downloaded and we need to find that in the PyStar2 folder. So go to desktop and then look for PyStar2 or the folder that you created. There's my one. Open and there's your image. I look at the image like a, almost like a hard drive that's going to run my Raspberry Pi hat. So select target is just selecting your SD card. So select target and ours is being given in the number or the letter F. Select and then flash. And it'll take a few minutes, follow the process. It will go all the way across in purple, then green, and if there's no errors, it will work. cancel. These kind of messages here, I will just cancel them out, yeah? Uh, and then it's let it do its thing. Hopefully it shouldn't be too long. Depending on how fast your system is, I think it's, you know, it's going to be 3-4 minutes at least. Okay, it's complete. We'll just click here and you can see it says flash complete. So grab the SD card, plug it into your hat and then we'll carry on. And I've on the left I'm just showing the hat that I purchased there. So you can see there everything came with it. So we just slipped our SD card in there. You can see it's at the antenna end and it's upside down. So it's facing, let me just show you another one. It's facing that, that way around, okay, when it slips in. And then we'll power it up now. Now it's, we do need to wait for it to, to boot up and wait a few minutes. And if the WPA supplicant or the username and password that we used for our Wi-Fi is correct, we'll be able to configure this on our PC and it will show up. So let's run our scanner and see if we can find it. Hopefully it should show something called PyStar. Just click play. It's searching everything on our network. Okay, well one has showed up and it's 192.168.0.100. Let's try that. Okay, it's showed up. It's 192.168.107. I've got it on my router and here on the IP search as well. So that's all good. So we just put that IP address into here, 192, and we can configure it now. 07, enter, and then we just click configuration here, sign in. And we're just going to leave it as a, as a simplex. See the two blue dots at the top here? Just leave them where they are. If you want duplex, pretty sure you just click the one underneath and you have two frequencies. But we're just going to do that. And we're going to go M0FXB. It's got a frequency of 431.550 we're going to use. You have to apply settings. Because we have to select the hat that we're using. So it's step by step. So we've applied those settings. It is working via Wi-Fi, so that's good news. Should be reasonably fast when you're on a Raspberry Pi 3B. And there you are. Now it's warning us that we need to select the correct hat. Go like so. And then you want to put in here the correct hat. Nice bit of music there. So you just drop it down. Type the word jewel in. And I'm pretty sure... It's the one that ends in DF2ET. Let's find it. Here it is, and it's GPI opens. It's that one there. And what else can we apply? Nothing at the moment. Each time you do this, well, we can turn on DMR and we can turn on OLED hat as well. Look, got that all on there. Click apply. 
And then after that, it's going to want our DMR number. You can see the hat there starting to come to life. DMR number goes here. Two, three, four, one, four, three, seven. Brandmeister security, you definitely need that. I'll show you that. Put my password in there because you won't hear anything without that if you're in the UK especially. And then we'll apply that. I'll show you Brandmeister. You need to go to this page and create yourself an account. And then when you log in, you can create yourself a password. So just go to self care, so call sign self care. And then here on the left, just type in a password here and save it. And that's the same password we're going to use in our hat. So go back to our hat. Here we've already put the password in. DMR. So in theory, now the only reason it wouldn't work now is because I selected the wrong hat. You know, that would be the only reason it wouldn't work. So let's just go to dashboard. Uh, so it's see all the green here. The green is shown that we are connected. So I'll just key the mic. Nothing's happening at the moment. So in the end, it did come to life. What I did, I went to configuration and I changed the selection to STM, DVM, MMDVM, HS hat. That's a single Pi hat and it started working. So let's have a look at the updates now because we've got 4.2 already. So we're fully up to date. Let's click it anyway and you'll see what it does. And also I'm going to see if I can update the actual hat that I've just bought and see if it lets me I'll put the command in and then we'll end the video but it's working fine and you know you just select DMR D star or fusion and it will work yeah it's still doing quite an update there look updating firewall p25 I will actually test to see if it when I transmit on m17 if the hat actually gives out a signal so yeah that's pretty good isn't it so we'll couple more tests and then we'll end you can see how nice that screen looks a couple of radios here right and it's showing that the dashboard is ends 201 here we're on pi star 4.2 you can see it's done all this and we'll go to configuration again go to expert upgrade i don't know if we even need to do this but we'll do it and then we're going to put in the the command to try and update the hat yeah it looks like that's doesn't need doing that one there dashboard now look on the left here it will give you the uh, the firmware version of your hat. Mine is 1.5.2, which is fine. And it, if it stays at that forever, it's fine. But that version will not do M17. So let's just see if we can update it. So all we do is go configuration, expert, SSH. And I've got this command. It might not work in. So the username is pi dash so I have known that sometimes the dual hats won't accept it. Pi star is login. Then Raspberry. Okay, login. And we're going to right click, paste this command, which I'll put in the description if it works. And then hit enter. And it says here, modem firmware update utility by Chip Cushio from W0CHP. Yeah, so let's just hit enter and let's see if it actually puts it in. And that will take us up to 1.6.1, .1, which should allow M17. And it's just nice to have the latest firmware as well. So I'll leave it live. Please fast forward if it's uh, boring, but it's, it's saying it's flashing modem. Fingers crossed on that.
Well, yeah. Modem firmware flash successful. Modem reinitialized. Go back to dashboard. Probably only need to reboot. And there it is there. Four point, sorry, 1.6.1. We'll let that reboot. So it has done it. Now we're going to test to see if it actually works on M17. Right, it's back on. I can hear DMR. So we'll go configuration, like so. And we're going to turn on M17. Turn off DMR. Going to apply. Grab one of my sets that's on. I use Droidstar to test because Droidstar does have M17. Let that reboot. I'll test it on. It says M17 there. I don't actually know what CAN means. Set your CAN code. Mm, okay. I know you have modules. So we we'll try M17, M17, because I've got a dashboard for that. You just keep scrolling down. Like so. There we in there. Where's the M's? I'll find it. Sorry about this. There it is there, and we'll do module C. Apply. You can hear my um, droid star firing up. Now what we would expect, to, if it's working, we'll get a, a proper uh, radio signal from the hat. Put the antenna back on actually. Like so. Droid star. Go back to dashboard. We're definitely on M17. I'm just doing a TX on M so M0 FXB test test. And it is showing a TX there. So that did show up. Uh, the next thing is just to grab a bow and see if I could hear. I mean, that is a purple color there. I'm not sure what that means. Well, I think we're near. Uh, we just need to I grab a bow in a minute. So you can see that my on the M17 dashboard, I'm there, but that would have been Droid Star. I haven't got an M17 RF radio. So I'll just do one last test and then we'll end the video because what you can normally do is hear, hear just a, a signal, a carrier. Uh, when you key up to one more test. M0 FXB, there it is. Test, 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 M0 FXB. So did you hear that? So it, it definitely worked. That's an actual M17 signal coming from my device. And it, this, the, the screen says M17. So yeah, it's working great. Thanks very much. Uh, lots of learning and lots of fun. 7.3.